Right, so this is just going to be how to index string brain because I was not live coding the implementation. So the problem is that this is really awkward. If we want to get, say, the eighth, seventh character even of stra here, what we want to be able to do is what we would normally do in another language other than Swift. I've done eight. Let's do that. But we can't do that in Swift unless we do some work first of all. This is really annoying because the way to get the eighth element is this. Uh, we have to get the strings. We have to ask it for an index. And we have to give it the start index. And then we have to offset it by So that is how we get the eighth element of string, which is an L. Let's go on to, let's make it seven. So we get the P from play. And that's a bit annoying. And if we wanted to all of play, we'd do um, this. And then we'd have to repeat this, could you not? And give it 11 or something. So this is why no one likes string indexing in Swift. Um, but there is a way of doing it, and I've written some code, which uh, I'll bring into view. Um, to do it. And basically I've got a generic called indexable by integer which you can use to wrap a collection including strings. And the way it works is if we make a string equal to an indexable by integer of string we get some good things. So string now is oh, in good connection. Let's give it that. And we need to write in it. But now we have just collection. So we've got what looks like a string acts like a string. But the new, the clever thing we can do with this is we can actually uh, index into it. Just like we want to and would expect. So that's it. That's my solution to um, you uh, creating an indexable array. Uh, there's a little improvement I can do with the constructor to get rid of this collection. Um, so if you're interested, let's go through the code. Well, um, so what it does, essentially we define this indexing. And what you do is you take your collection uh, which has got an indices, which is the array of indices. So it actually is quite a useful thing to know that every collection, I think, has an array of indices. Um, but for some reason, you can't just index into it. You cannot do that, which would be quite useful. Um, no exact machine calls a subscription. I don't know, there might be a better way of doing it than I'm currently doing. Uh, but what we can do is drop the first n and then take the first index. And the drop first is efficient because it's returning a subsequence of collection, of this collection, of the indices. So it's not actually changing any 
doing any mutations and making new arrays or anything. It's just changing a view. So this is reasonably efficient. So uh, that's how I, uh, you can get the actual index using an integer. And then you have to write the subscripts uh, with a get and set. Um, uh, and basically it converts the integer into a string index and then uses that to index into the collection. And the same with the set. Uh, for set, we have to create a new collection of the generic collection type um, and add in a value because we're we're doing it by element, so we get an empty collection and add in the value. Uh, if there's an element here, I'm not sure, but uh, and then I use the replace subrange to replace just that sub small subrange, which is just one character. And then for a range, we create a closed range, and then we we invoke the closed range code uh, which gives the start and end indices and returns the collection subsequence at that point or if we're setting it we again get the start and the end and we replace that subrange with the new value. Um, so we can even do things like string hello uh, string zero equals y and if we print the string again you can see it's changed here in the in the playground, in the, uh, um, and we can even do string zero. Uh, you know, is to five, six, five, eight, five equals. Uh, And again, if we print string in the sidebar, we get goodbye playground. So that is how we can make a string indexable by a collection, um, by an integer. And it actually works with any collection. Um, and I'm going to get rid of this by creating an initializer. So, you know. Oops. There we go. Uh, so it's not that hard to index strings with integers. Just need to write a little bit of code. I'll put this on a gist or in a package. Um, thanks for watching.